that are entered or sheriff sales that go through. There's ways to get all that information, but ultimately that's not going to get you anywhere because the bank's not going to sell the property themselves. Now maybe if you're dealing with a small community bank that's not comfortable with foreclosures, you may be able to get in and work out some deal, but with the big stuff, you got to wait for it to go through the process, they get title, it goes back on the market um, with a, a, you know, on the MLS, and then you, just like everyone else, get to jump at it. Now, one of the things that I noticed when I was looking at the MLS uh, listings is the tax bills are all showing for 2009. When does that get updated? Because we know that the taxes have gone up, so that's not a realistic... Well, the 2010 taxes, the second installment just came out. Right. So right. there's and a lag period in which people are updating that information. Right. That's and all that, public record now. And 20, yeah. 2010 second installment taxes are due on November 1st, so I assume after November 1st we're going to start to show up in the MLS. But those are easy to check. If you have a, a PIN number, you go to cookcountytreasurer.com. Well, that's the thing. Type in the PIN and number. then how do you get the, oh, you can get the PIN number off you the can, ML, Yeah, the MLS, no, every property a has a PIN number. You can do a search and then yeah. the search the address. Yeah, and if you don't have the yeah, MLS, right. you can go to cookcountyassessor.com. Yeah. You can type in the address uh -huh. and then you get the PIN number. Right. Yeah, and then you yeah. take that. Yeah, I know. So, good. That's how I spend my days. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? <laughs> Anything? Any real estate related questions? Any law questions? You know, I've had my experience with trying to sell a condo, a beautiful one on 18th and Michigan, and you're right. I mean, if there's litigation, which a lot of these kind of condominiums are in litigation because the developers have done crappy work, they it, it just drags on and on and on. Well, this qualifies the, the building meetings. from getting financing. Yeah, the lenders. So what? You can't get financing for a buyer. All right. There, right. there are some sell. lenders. Some some. Big lenders, especially ones with the red, white, and the blue, they will not even look at a condo if there's any litigation. Period. If there's litigation, it automatically disqualifies it. Now, other lenders will look at it and basically, if it's not going to cost you guys any money as an association, they'll be willing to finance. But if there's a potential for a special assessment or if the work is not completed that they're suing over, it's unlikely most lenders will finance on it. So we're seeing a lot of problems there. And there are buildings, I had someone call me this week, and they were telling me about a, a building they wanted to put an offer in on. And I said, I go, are well, you paying cash? And he said, no. I said, forget it. I said, why? I said, because I just had a client try to buy there. We went through five lenders, and nobody will finance that building because of the litigation and, and the special assessment going on. So. It, it is a problem, and it, that is something you guys should definitely be looking at when you guys are making offers as well. Find that stuff out up front. Yeah, because if there's a developer that hired separate subcontractors or to do the work, and for whatever reason that developer isn't holding up to his end of the bargain, he maybe is not paying these guys, then those guys put a lien on that whole building. So every, mm -hmm. all your condos have a right. lien again you know, mm -hmm. on them and you can't get out of it. Or yeah. the yeah. subcontractor yeah. did improper work. Right. And so the developer gets sued, That's, he sues the subcontractor, right. and now their insurance companies are involved. It's it gets yeah. Developers and subcontractors do a substandard work here in Chicago. I've never heard of such a thing. <laughs> and anything new you don't want to buy. Yes. <laughs> I keep yes, telling people, new is not better. <laughs> new is not better. It's just untested. Five years old. It's worse. It's worse. <laughs> I'm a contractor, and it's <laughs> worse. I am, I'm putting in windows She's and doors. She's the reason. <laughs> and, and buildings are only five years old. All these beautiful buildings you see all yeah. over the place, glass block in them and everything. All that stuff is, has to be replaced. It's leaking. It's going between the walls. They did, they're all doing shoddy work. And, I mean, hack jobs. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So an older building is the best thing to look at. I haven't mm -hmm. come across a new building yet that's been done well. Sad. It's very sad. Very good. Well, oh, all right. <clears throat> um, Jonathan has his information. I'll give you um, some other handouts. And if you have any questions that you think of in the meantime, uh, you can call Jonathan or myself or email us. We're here to help. We want to make sure you're Please making a good decision. Take my brochures and my card. Yeah. Please grab some more donuts because I have to bring them home. And my kids will, <laughs> my kids will be happy and my wife not so much. Jonathan, thank you very much. Thanks, Bert. Appreciate you coming. One, one last question. Uh, one last probably question. Probably an impossible question to answer. Yeah, that was my favorite. <laughs>
<laughs> in your experience on all these short sales, based on the listing price, what what have you seen people settling on, maybe percentage wise, for the final price? Uh, Just as, as a buyer, when you right, see that listing price, what can you answer? It is an impossible. It's an I, impossible question to answer. Um, is there a <laughs> I, I can answer with the general. Uh, you're going to pay what the property is worth. Uh, I still think a short sale. You're going to get below market value. Uh, and again, my scenario was kind of an amalgamation of the worst of all. Sometimes it really is that bad. A lot of times it's bits and pieces of that. We also have had lenders that have approved everything. I've gotten short sales done and approved in two weeks, start to finish. It just everything seems to go right. One lender? I've had what, two lenders and done in four weeks. Uh, I've had everything waived. Uh, you know, there's a a lot of it is based on price. If you get the price they want, things go quicker. But it also is based on who the negotiator is. Yeah. Some of them are very good. I've talked to some of these negotiators. At, you know, you get to know each other pretty well in the course of a transaction. And some of them, you know, they have background in, you know, mortgage or finance or whatever, and they understand the process and they're very good to work with. Others of them are absolutely horrible. You can't get a hold of them, or they have horrible personalities or they don't want to negotiate with you. Um, so there's so many moving parts on these things, yeah. it's impossible to answer. But I, I will say, if you're reasonable on your price, you're probably going to get it closed. If you, again, are patient and are willing to kind of play the game. And you can always say no. And if you say no, forcefully enough, you may get a lender that's willing to just go, oh, he was really serious. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back down here. That happens. And then you have some of these lenders, especially these second lenders, that will tell you, we want X amount, we won't take a penny less, we won't pay these fees, and if you're not going to present this, don't call us back because you have 24 hours or we're closing the file. So you, it's really all over the board and you kind of just, you know, you don't know as a buyer what you're getting into. And if you hear anyone say pre-approved short sale or any of that other garbage, usually garbage. It means nothing. Every deal stands on its own. Every time we resubmit a file, we're resubmitting the entire package. We're starting with a new negotiator, we're doing a new BPO, and the game is started all over again in most cases. So. Do you know, is it is it more, uh, maybe you don't know this answer, it might be for the lender, um, is it more difficult because I am self-employed, my husband works for a company, but I am self-employed. Yeah, the self-employment is very difficult right now. Mm -hmm. You can talk to lenders, uh, but it's hard to verify the income. I mean, we've got pre-approved already. Well, I have my quarterly. Or you I know mean, what, I have you my know what a pre-approval is worth in my mind? Well, exactly. That's what I thought. <laughs> pre-approval. Less, less than the donut. Yeah, I mean, we got great FICO scores. There's no debt. One mortgage. That's, home, that's, that's, that's all good, but they're also looking at being able to what if I lose what if I can't up. sell anymore that type of thing what if I can't stay in business yeah. as a well, you know they're gonna they, they they're gonna look at tax returns for a couple of years they mm -hmm. want to see the history of what you're making yeah. and I had a deal a couple weeks ago a buyer of mine he's semi-retired <coughs> he's a consultant he was making very good money for a number of years and then he decided that he was going to kind of semi-retire so last year his income dropped off and this year it's about where it was last year. And the lender had a problem with that and kept saying, why did your income drop off? He goes, I'm 66 years old. I semi-retired. I'm self-employed. I was working, you know, I had all these clients and I decided to get rid of half of them. My income, my income went down. It took us four months to get the lender to approve it. So, so more difficult they're, they're, as nuts as they are on short sales, they're, they're just as bad on the buy side. So. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Anything else? <laughs> All right. Thanks, Sean. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys coming down.